Good day, everybody. Uh, Dan Sheehan here uh, from the Great Hall of Plum Life Knowledge. For those of you who uh, uh, know me, um, uh, work in the sales team here, uh, along with my colleagues, uh, Jen Fittipaldi and, and Ray Burton, who have joined me today. And uh, we are always super excited to be spending this time with you on uh, field underwriting. Uh, we were we were uh, prepping for today's session and we were talking about uh, how important not only this is to your customers to help get them approved, but how important it is to help your business uh, because more approvals mean more people are protected and that means more money in your pocket, which, uh, you know, is is a good part of why we're all here today. So uh, we're going to be running through if you haven't joined us before. Welcome. Uh, strap in. Uh, we have a lot to get to, and we're gonna we're gonna get started in just a minute. But just some housekeeping things. Uh, down in the bottom here, there's a question uh, question mark. Please ask questions today. Uh, chances are the question you might ask somebody else is not asking, and it's going to help everybody. It also helps us because as we build things out, the, the best way we can uh, adapt to what you need is by knowing what uh, what questions you have. So uh, in the uh, in that uh, that the question mark area, post your questions. We can see them, and we'll do our best to get to as many of them live as we can, uh, or we'll answer them in the chat box. This session is being recorded, so certainly take notes. But if for some reason uh, there's something you miss, you'll be able to watch it. We'll push this out tomorrow. Uh, but most of all, really just be a sponge. Uh, we're going to hit you with uh, uh, some uh, great insight, some resources, some brand new ones, by the way, uh, which we're, we're pumped to bring with you today. So um, uh, get ready and uh, let's just dive right into it. You know, when you talk about field underwriting, this is the most important. You are the interface between the carrier and the customer. And the most important piece of that how we gather information in order for a case to be considered by a carrier uh, for an offer and hopefully an approval is really starts with that conversation that you have with your customer. They may have the greatest intentions of wanting to protect their family or their business, but we all know it's not how big a check they can write, but can they qualify? Can they qualify a variety of different ways? A lot of that is their health. And the most important thing you could be is that conduit between the customer, how they respond, how they complete their applications, and the underwriting team that's going to make those decisions. Uh, you are an incredibly important point and part of that. If you've been in the industry, you know what I'm talking about. If this is newer to you, field underwriting uh, is going to be one of the most important things that you learn and understand and will make your life a lot less hard, not to say our industry is not challenging, it is, but you can make it a lot less hard on you and a lot more pleasurable for your clients by just taking some of the things we share with you today and continue to bring them into your business uh, to, uh, to increase your knowledge and understanding so you could have a great experience and so can your potential clients. So with that, um, I'm going to kick it over to uh, my colleague, Ray Burton, uh, who leads our case management team, the amazing people that when you put as well. But Ray, if you're ready to rock and roll, uh, I'll turn it over to you and uh, we'll get going. OK. Great. How's everyone doing today? Thanks, Dan. Um, Dan, can you confirm if you can see this uh, screen? Okay, great. Good. Yeah, so as Dan mentioned, you know, we've, uh, you know, built this platform, um, really built it for scale, and we've got literally, you know, thousands and thousands of agents using the platform. We've processed tens of thousands, if not more, apps uh, through this platform. And what it's done is it's really allowed us to sort of walk a mile in the shoes of the carriers that we work with um, because we build you know really good integrations with the carriers and with the underwriting logic and also with the reinsurers that backstop those carriers 
Um, and all this volume and activity that we've been able to submit over the last couple of years or more um, has really helped us learn a lot about the process um, and apply the experience that we brought, you know, into this company, into the, the platform itself for the benefit of you guys, um, the agents. Um, and what field underwriting really is, in short, it's knowing your customer. And the industry has evolved quite a bit over the last, you know, five to 10 years, where before a lot of apps were submitted on paper and, you know, underwriters didn't have access to a lot of, you know, databases in the background. Um, and so there was a lot of back and forth uh, with, you know, agents and underwriters and case managers um, and a lot of kind of you know, muscle and energy and effort went into each case to try to get it across the finish line. Whereas now, you know, we have a, a great digital platform to make it easy to collect the information and submit it to the carriers. And carriers have access to a ton of real-time information. In mo most cases, the carriers know more about the prescription history of these clients than the clients even do. And so what we're really talking about when it comes to field underwriting is really knowing your customer, you know, knowing their situation, whether it be, you know, their health situation, their finance, financial situation or lifestyle, you know, factors and helping the carrier paint a picture of the risk that they're going to consider so that they can make a decision in a timely fashion um, and get that policy enforced and get those clients covered. And so it really is in your best interest to do your homework on the clients and on the carriers and really understand, you know, if there's medical history there or if there's, you know, financial information that could be of value to helping shape the policy for your client. All that information goes into the application and into the underwriting decision that the carriers make. And the carriers, when they're considering, you know, an approval or decline decision, they're really thinking about three key factors. The first is health. And this is sort of where I led off, where these carriers, they almost know more than the client does about their own health situation. Um, and so they're going to be looking for things first, whether it's a knockout condition, you know, that could be BMI, that could be a recent cancer diagnosis you know, a recent stroke, things of that nature, you know, obviously those are going to be knockouts. Um, and if they don't see the information in the app, chances are they already know it. Um, and what might have been a condition that they could have considered will be a decline if it's not um, shared within the application or not written down somewhere for the app, for the underwriters to, to look at. But even with all the conditions that underwriters are concerned about, Roughly 60% of US consumers would qualify for insurance just based on their health. So it's not like the underwriters or the carriers are looking for that needle in a haystack. There's really a lot of people out there that qualify. It's just a matter of getting the information into a, into a format that the underwriters can do something with. The second is financial. And obviously it's important um, that the client can pay their monthly premiums or their annual premiums. Um, but the financial situation is important for two other reasons. One, you know, how much insurance makes sense for the client. And a lot of times that's based on the annual income that might need to be replaced. It could be based on the size of the family, the number of dependents, where those dependents are in terms of how old they are. Um, and so forth. So really understanding the financial situation of your clients is just as important as the health situation. It, it helps you find the right policy for your clients, helps you shape and size that policy and design that solution for your clients. And it helps the underwriters, you know, gives them confidence that the client will be able to keep that policy in force and continue to pay that policy. Then the third factor is behavioral. Um, and we see this a lot. You know, there's, um, you know, one thing that's important is they want to see, the carriers want to see clients that are equally invested in their health 
um, as the carriers are. These carriers are writing long-term financial contracts that'll last, you know, 30 years or more. And they want to know that the clients are equally invested in their health and their longevity. So they want to see ongoing and consistent doctor visits. Um, you know, there are knockout activities such as criminal activity in the last 10 years, multiple DUIs, bankruptcies, um, you know, active policies and delinquency. And these are all things that will knock out a client and get a decline from the carrier. But even with all these things that the carriers are looking for, if you add it all together, you know, the 60% for health, the 85% for financial, roughly 70% for behavioral, there's still a gigantic market out there um, for us to go after. So there's roughly 85 million people in the U.S. that would qualify for underwritten life insurance based on these key factors. And if you if you think about what it takes to identify these clients and really understand, um, you know, what the, what's in their best interest, a lot of time those discovery sessions that are going to be important to designing the case and designing the policies are going to be equally important to field underwriting um, and making sure that if, you know, an underwritten policy isn't going to work, that we just, you know, don't submit it. Because what will happen is if we submit an application for a client that ends up getting declined by the carrier, then all the other carriers in the U.S. are going to know that that client has a decline on their record and every single one of these carriers asks in their application have you ever been declined for insurance and so it just creates an issue for the client that is hard to get out of if there's a decline on their record so obviously we're not going to see 100 percent approval um, but with the tools that we have built into the platform as well as some of the resources that you have access to um, from a people standpoint here at Plum Life, we think you can get a really high approval rate. And we have, you know, worked closely with our agents and with our carriers. And, you know, for example, we have a, a really great IUL partner that writes, you know, million dollar IUL business for, for our agents who has, we're at, we're at close to a 90% approval rate. Um, and on some of our underwritten term business, we're, you know, above 70, you know, kind of mid 70% approval rate. And we started out much lower than that, but through these kind of sessions and through the tools and resources that we built into the platform, um, our agents have really under, gotten to understand what, you know, factors the carriers are gonna be looking for, how to prospect and identify clients that meet the criteria, and then, actually elevate those conversations now from trying to understand and identify knockout conditions to actually finding solutions that make better sense for the client and actually end up generating more income for the agents. Um, Dan mentioned it right off the top that these kind of sessions are important for you, not just to avoid, you know, getting declines on, on your record and on the client's record, but actually generate much higher commission levels and generate much more satisfaction for your clients by getting them covered um, in a timely fashion. Um, so these are really the, the three key criteria to look for when it comes to field underwriting. And like I said, it doesn't take a lot of extra time because the time that you spend understanding what the client needs and what kind of protection is important for their family is also valuable investment in understanding these field underwriting considerations. And agents that are really doing a great job with field underwriting are also doing a great job generating a lot of production and generating a lot of commissions. And they really do go hand in hand. Um, both sides of the coin are, are equally important. Um, so I think with that, what I'd like to do, we sort of teed this up, so I'd like to hand it back over to Dan uh, to walk through some of the highlights of the, the Plum Life platform, but more importantly, kind of give you a sense of where to look to find information that's gonna be critical 
Um, and then Jen will walk you through some of the additional resources that we provide to really help help you um, get to where you want to go in terms of production, in terms of approval rates, and in terms of generating consistent performance um, through this partnership that we built. Um, so with that, Dan, I'll hand it over to you. Awesome. Uh, well done. And uh, Jen, I just wanted to bring you in here. For those of you who have not gotten a note from Jen, if you know, if you did, you know. Uh, uh, she has been an uh, incredible resource for all of you to help bridge this gap that we're going to be talking about today, that you are the, the eyes and ears. Uh, and But sometimes things get left out, and our role is to help you through that process. Um, Jen, as I'm just pulling up my stuff here, was there anything you wanted to add? By the way, Jen is already answering questions in the chat. So uh, please throw them in there. We'll do our best to answer as many as we can. Some we may not have the answers on, but we'll follow up. Uh, but Jen, was there anything, um, anything else relative to what Ray was mentioning? I love what he said about they're going to find out anyway. So yeah. uh, I know you said yeah. you, you had some statistics. You, maybe you could throw those in there while I, while I pull up the info. Yeah, that's a great point. The, they are. Uh they meaning the underwriters the powers that be they're going to find out because they're they're doing those database checks right and nobody can escape from that um one of the things that we often see is what we call the clean cheater where every health question is just answered no um the client presents is extremely healthy um just let's take an example last month we had about 65% of our applications that were submitted, and this is accelerated underwriting. So I'm talking about a specific niche of application here, but 60, 65% were all no's. So what we would call a clean sheet. Um, it's, it's a little ironic because in the United States, 66% uh, of adults have at least one prescription. And that number increases. So if you're in the 17 to 34, it's about 50%, 52, I believe. If you're if you're going from 34 to 49, it's 62. Once you go over 50, um, it's in the 70s. And then anything over 80, it's almost 90%. So you know, keep those things in mind. Um, and it's it's kind of on you as an agent to educate your client. The average consumer doesn't understand the process of applying for life insurance. They don't understand the concept that their medical records are digitized and easily scannable by insurance companies. Um, so just taking that time to, to educate them the five minutes that, without scaring them, but you know, letting them know what the process looks like and why it's so important to be truthful, it it does end up being very helpful both for you and for your client. We had one uh, that um, we had heard from from uh, Steph on our team that just catches me off guard as an example where, uh, and if you guys could just let me know if you could see my screen. Yes, we can. We're good. So uh, we had somebody that was, now you know the term clean sheeting, um, and there's percentages of people uh, that are have no medical and no issues is pretty, you know, low. Um, to they, they had taken no medications. And what did they have rate? 11? You remember that one? They, they, the person was taking 11 different medications, but they, for whatever reason, did not put them on the application. So what we do is we go back to you. Jen would write you a note and say, hey, could you just take a look at this? Because ultimately, as Ray was talking about, um, to increase the likelihood of approval, the underwriter is relying on you and the client to paint a picture. And uh, you have to be an active participant uh, in that. So uh, what you see on my screen, it maybe looks a little bit different than your dashboard, but I'm going to show you some of the resources that you can use and the team is going to jump in in and out here again i see more questions being posted you could get it you could have a 
uh, get a degree in underwriting just by those answers that you're already getting. So please read them. Again, we'll record all this stuff and you'll have it captured. You are going to see something right now that is debuting today. If you haven't tried to find it or you tried to um, go and run a term quote today, where's Banner? Where's Banner? I've heard that probably 50 times today. It's here. We're going to show you where it is. But I'm showing you this in the context of what Ray said. Um, once you see the money that can be made uh, and the opportunity, you're going to want to put in the best information you can. So your client has a higher likelihood of getting the right product at the right time because now you could do a, a protection portfolio and use different products at different moments for different purposes to give the client the coverage they need, but use underwriting because the different carriers, and Jen will check me on this, the different carriers have different limitations. They have different comfort levels in certain things, and we'll go through those. Uh, you wanna know that. But I wanna show you this because we want you to see it and thank you for taking the time today. So when you, you've probably been wondering, where is, where is Instant Term, where's Banner? Well, what the team has done over many months, and I get the privilege of showing this to you, is when you click on Term now, and you go to run a quote, I'm not gonna do anything, I'm just gonna let this rip. And this is going to feel and look very different. Look at this, we now have and give you the ability to not see one quote at a time, but all of the carriers that would have an eligible product that you're asking for in one place. So you'll see whatever is available. You see, here's Banner. Someone said, where's Banner? Where's Instant Term? There it is. Here's AIG if you wanted that. Here's Mutual. Whoever you can write that particular product through now is all in one place, okay? So don't fret. We actually made it a little bit easier, but we're debuting this literally today. It got launched and we're really excited because our phones are ringing off the hook more than they normally do. Um, now there's one thing that I'm gonna show you because we just learned this, was when you go run some banner term uh, uh, quotes, it's only giving you the option of doing like a 10 year level term when you first run the quote, okay? Do not fret what you do if you want to do something different. You come over here to select product, and then you could pick whatever length of time you need. All right. So for now, that's a, just a workaround. It ju we just discovered that today, I think, and um, we're uh, we're really excited about uh, the prospects here for uh, what's going to happen going forward. So. If you if you're wondering where all those products went, because it does look a little bit strange, they're all now under one roof, and we're really excited about giving you that opportunity. Now you can quote them all on here. We've been getting the question. Can you you'll see all the quotes? I'm gonna run it one more time so you see it. Uh, you can run all the quotes here. I've been getting the question. Can I send this whole thing to my customer? The answer is right now no. Uh, the consensus was that it might be too confusing to send them all of this and let them do it. So you are the uh, you are the catalyst for the conversation. So we're putting this in your hands. And then as you look at the different products. Now, if you're in a, a video meeting with somebody, you certainly could pull this up with them and look at all at once. But let's say, for example, you said, oh, well, I, I still want to use accelerated term to rest BLI. You could select that product and you could still do your um, uh, your uh, ability to uh, email them the quote and things like that, okay? So Ray or Jim, was there anything on that that I, that I didn't hit on that we wanna to touch on? We can move on into more underwriting stuff. No, I think that that's a great overview, just knowing that all of the term products are now housed under that one term button. And Again, the spirit of why well, we wanted to show it because we were excited about it and you're here with us, uh, but also because when you look at that, you may use different products for different purposes. You may use different lengths terms, you know, with Banner, for example, you, there's riders in there or you might want to pick different carriers. It's going to depend. So what I'd like to do now is shift and talk a little bit about some of the resources you have from an underwriting perspective. So when you actually go in, and you're gonna run a quote, one of the things you could do is the risk classes, which are right here. 
all right? Now, please, as Jen was giving you percentages of, of people that are taking medications, right? A lot of people are. When you're quoting, look at, we actually put the percentages and likelihood, and you guys tell me if it's way too small, uh, but only 15% of people are preferred plus. Only 20% are preferred, 25, 50% of people are standard. So try and quote as accurately as you can, okay? When you're going through uh, uh, this process. Um, so that's one thing that you can use. Again, we're gonna go through a lot today, so I'm not gonna spend a huge amount of time on each one, but I do wanna show you these things that you have access to. And you could pick that and run your quotes. Again, not everybody's preferred plus, uh, keep that in mind when you are uh, looking at that. And I'm going to show you some other tools you can use to determine, well, where would they fall? Because Ray showed you it's not just their health. There's other things that come into play that can make or break uh, a case. In terms of resources, the product center is a very deep pool. So is the marketplace. I'm going to hit on both, right? So when you go into each product, make sure you jot this down. Uh, again, product center. And when you go into each of the, the products here, I'm just going to stay on accelerated term just to be consistent. There's a product overview, but what I want to focus on is in this area. So these are accelerated underwriting guidelines. Read through them and get familiar. Why don't we put these here so you can reference them? You don't need to memorize them. I don't memorize them because they're here. Um, for those of you who don't know, our platform is available not only on a desktop or a laptop or an iPad, you can use this on your phone. So let's say you're out and about and someone says, can I get X, Y, or Z, but I have W, okay, I have hypertension. All right, hey, let me check that out. Let me see what that looks like. You have it right here at your fingertips. Not everybody qualifies. So we have, we made it pretty clear, knockouts. Please review these lists. Some people have taken a screenshot and they save it. Some people have printed it out in their office. I'm giving you just best practices. But pull this out, even if you have it on a screen with a client, and just turn it to them and say, is there anything on this list that you have? Because if they do, this is a knockout list. And Ray or Jen, jump in here if there's any, if there are exceptions to this. But when we say knockout, if any of these things or something that this applicant have, the chances are for this particular product, they are not going to qualify, including, and this is where a lot of people miss, if uh, they're unemployed other than a homemaker, uh, if they have any sig significant criminal history, okay, if they have bankruptcy, Jen mentioned that earlier, I think or Ray did, liens and judgments. Remember the, the different percentages that Ray shared. But when you're when you're looking at a field underwriting just take the moment take the time Ray said to get to know your client it's going to help you because now you could pivot somewhere else and jen we even have in the in the applications right we'll get to that in a minute some things that they can use uh that we actually help them to to pivot to other things right we do and yeah we'll review that momentarily i just wanted to say yep just reiterate that it going through the application alone and asking the health questions is not going to get you to a place of a, a solid field underwriting. This financial and lifestyle portion is so important because there's not really specific places in the actual application that is going to give you the opportunity to bring this up with your client. So it's very important ahead of time and we do have what we call a pre-qualification screen that brings up some of these issues, but really important for you to make sure that your client is employed, um, that again, that they do not have bad debt. So anything in collections is going to get flagged on them. Um, if they are collecting disability, that's generally a deal breaker for specifically, we're looking at SBLI's accelerated term right now, but for a lot of carriers, if they're dependent on disability income. Um, so these are things that you want to flesh out in that conversation naturally as you're beginning to select the perfect product for them. 
don't wait until you're in the stage where you're answering application questions. Good point. Great point. And we'll get to those. Um, attend, when we order medical records, again, I'm just pointing these things out. This is one of the most underutilized resources that we have, this class criteria. And I'm going to use nicotine as a, a proxy to, to help you to understand this. So there's different rating classes. And Jen, Jen actually helps to catch me on this, because I will ask her quite often, uh, because this does, this does trip us up a lot in the field. Nicotine use. For preferred plus, you have to have no nicotine products in the last five years for this particular carrier. If I go to standard, no nicotine in the last 12 months. So, Jen, check me on this. The way we would say this was the best class. If that person used nicotine um, uh, you know, 11 months ago or 13 months ago, the best class they can possibly get is standard. Is that a fair way to say it? That's correct. And you would assume if there's anything on top of that previous nicotine use, then you, in your mind, know that generally they that client will likely go into a table read class. Um, so that is basically, think of it as your minimum premiums. Whenever you run a quote, if if you're falling into the standard the minimum premium is going to be what that standard rate class shows you and then you have to take into account any additional medical history that that client is disclosing to you um including things like that we talked about financials including things like family medical history so one of the big things that will impact rate class is parents and siblings and that medical um scenario there so you have to take all of these things into account once you establish this minimum and uh let me go back to knockout because uh, this one also catches us people think well if i don't see it on here it must be okay that is not true okay see this right here uh, this has caught me multiple occasions so jen we have a couple of things that they can use right we have the ability to do could you just touch on the quick quote and um uh, I'll show the the banner uh, uh, quick quote as well. But how can if if they don't see it on here or they're not sure, what would you advise the the people on the line to do to help themselves? Yeah. So number one, we're always your resource. So anything that you need, come to us. I know as agents, you want to get things done. You want to get them done quickly. So we want you to be able to do that as well. That's why we're giving you the product center. But so, sometimes it's gonna be a medical scenario that is not listed here. It might be niche. It might be something that you've never heard of. Um, the best thing to do is just shoot us an email. S send us an email at support at Hello Plum. We will send a quick quote to SVLI. We will get back to you. It typically takes 24 hours, sometimes less. Um, and then you'll have an answer for that client. So how the quick quote works is you wanna send us the basic medical information. We need to know your client's uh, gender, we need to know their height and weight, their age, and all of their medical conditions. Um, so you should do that field underwriting process, send us the information that you've gathered from that field underwriting process, and we can come back and say, this client is eligible for coverage, now, you always want to know that this does depend on the full underwriting process. They're still going to run those database checks, so we still need that transparency. But we'll give you a general idea of if they're el eligible for coverage and what potential rate class is. Um, so again, they'll give you kind of the underwriters, in particular, I'm talking about SBLI right now, will come back and give you like, what is your minimum class right now? Um, and then you can go from there. We also have a great resource for Banner um, that you can actually access without even having to come to us. Dan, I don't know if you have that available. I'm gonna up. Talk, keep, keep going. I'm going to try and bring it up. So it's it's the ability for you to submit a quick quote directly to Banner, and you will get that information back to your inbox. So it's just a digitized version. Uh, you're going to fill out a form which Dan's gonna show you just a moment. Um, again, do 
do your field underwriting ahead of time because you need all of that information to put in here. But this will come directly back to you. They will give you the suggested class. They will let you know that there is the potential for coverage. Um, and that will help you when you're designing, you know, what, what Dan call wait, Dan, what is it that you call it? What's your, your coverage? Oh, mix? protection portfolio. Protection, protection portfolio. I knew you had, he has a fancy word for it. <laughs> protection portfolio. So as you're designing the coverage for that client, these are really helpful tools. And um, in the chat, we, you know, we're talking about these medical conditions and yes, Sometimes it feels overwhelming. You don't, you're not a medical doctor. Um, trust me, I, I haven't been doing this that long, but I've become <laughs> somewhat, somewhat of a medical doctor. You get familiar. So it's not about knowing exactly what the conditions are. It's having a concept of um, from that client, getting a read on your client, how serious are their health issues. And whenever you start to get that thought in your mind, mm, I should check, that means you should. If you are uncertain, always check. It's it's better. It's better for you. It's better for your client. You want to protect that client from a decline on the record. Ray, you had um, uh, we had been talking about this. You know, when under the the more accurate you are, the better off the agents are, right? From a from an underwriting perspective, you know, putting everything in, and we even talked about, you know these scenarios where if, if we keep seeing, um, you know, this consistent pattern of kind of taking the bottom drawer and people that are, that are declined other places and just kind of putting them in here and hoping that could actually be derogatory for the agent as well. Um, and you had talked about in previous lives, uh, how you saw some of that, you know, kind of come to fruition. And really, we really don't want that to happen to any people here. Do you, could you just opine on that a little bit? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I joined Plum Life because I wanted to apply some of the experience that I had developed over the last, you know, 20 years into a modern tech platform. But, you know, I've been at the biggest insurance companies and reinsurers, um, you know, around. And, you know, we've definitely seen situations where carriers have received multiple apps that have been clean sheeted with conditions that weren't disclosed and those agents have been terminated and we want to avoid that obviously we have we work with multiple carriers through the plum life platform we have relationships with you know sbli banner aig mutual of omaha a long list of carriers um and we've had agents terminated um, but we want to avoid that and move from that side of the spectrum to just worrying about whether I'm going to get terminated or whether the app will get declined to how do I find, you know, the right financial solution for this client that I have? Because one thing we know is, you know, the insurance industry is great and there's always a solution. So a lot of times if a client can't, um, you know, get approved for underwritten life insurance, you know, th there might be a condition that they're managing through medication and the industry just hasn't caught up with, you know, how effective these medications are at managing these symptoms and helping people live long, productive lives. Um, but certainly those medications can help the person on the health side of things, but it doesn't prevent accidents from happening. So we do have a, a a few different carriers that offer accidental death protection um, that could be a great solution. Uh, we just actually worked with one client yesterday, last night actually, um, with an agent who had gotten a decline on a life insurance application. He was looking for a million dollars of coverage, but between two of our carriers with Assurity and Mutual of Omaha, they were able to get 850,000 of AD for a hundred dollars a month. And that's meaningful, significant coverage for their family. Um, even though they couldn't get underwritten coverage, they were able to get coverage for accidents. Um, and th those kind of conversations and really uncovering, you know, the situation is what leads to those types of solutions. So that thanks, Ray. And so I'm just back here now. Uh, on on this screen, we want to get into the app a little bit to show you some more resources. So 
all the products that you see here will have similar information for you going across even build charts and things like that so if you're wondering well where does the person fall into take a quick peek here and give yourself the best shot up front again you're the eyes and the ears right it's not all maybe the instant term uh, but even to some extent it's all right here uh, in front of you uh, to leverage so Jen did you want me to do you want to drive or do you want me just to pull up an app and you were going to walk through some of the some of I the safety one note before we do that Dan and yeah if you want to go ahead and pull up the app I think it's important we showed you the accelerated term the multi quote the new version of that where you're seeing the same uh, quote across carriers um and obviously the one that looks the cheapest that that is intriguing but the thing to note here is is take your client run the quote but then take your client and go to the product center look at those build charts because those are not consistent across carriers so if you if your clients a certain height and weight they might be in one risk class just based on build at SBLI and a different risk class entirely based on build at Banner or at Assurity. So it's important not just to, to look at the price from that term, but really make sure that based on your client's uh, medical conditions, height and weight, that they are fitting into a certain risk class um, for the carrier that you've chosen. And you said to me earlier today, do not, what do you, I want you to say to the group, do not, like I'm bringing up the app now, do that before what we're about to show you here, right? Don't right. use this. Yeah, don't, don't wait until this point to have the conversation with your client. Um, if you're already this far into the process, number one, they're invested. So it's, it's hard to make the pivot. It's hard to pitch a different product do the research do the field underwriting ahead of time because it's your responsibility to your client to pick the very best product the product that they need and the product that they can qualify for um so choosing the product and then doing the field underwriting it, it's going to end up shooting you in the foot um particularly in cases where you do have a client that has health issues prescriptions um or you know financial or behavioral um so something that we haven't mentioned but previous drug use those are the things that you know you want to get out in the conversation prior to product selection so we put this here to help you to warn you uh to warn your client but i wouldn't wait until this point or depend upon this to to make those determinations so hopefully you could see I've got the I've got the screen up here. So if you just tell me where you want me to go and, and I'll do my best. OK, so this pre qualification screen, essentially, if you're saying yes to any of these health questions. Um, so you want to say yes to that first one, because this is sorry. this is telling us that, <laughs> that you have talked to your client about uh, being transparent about disclosure about the database checks about the process that's going to happen um so you want to say yes here you should actually say yes because you have done this um because it is very important but as we go down if you say yes to any of these health conditions you should not proceed and actually we will not let you proceed because that client would be a decline anything that is appearing on here is in one variation or another also in that knockout section of the product center um, so this is just where we've found that agents and our clients have missed certain things from the from those underwriting guidelines and we bring them here because they happen frequently we want to make sure you don't proceed um, to protect your client from a, a decline on the record and this is also why uh, just to to jump in on that is when because people do this they just come in no 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 they say no to everything and that's that's when you get the note from us um and you don't want that and ray i think um we've had situations where cases have come in and people would have got approved if they just laid it all out is that can you just Absolutely. talk about that a little bit 
Absolutely. So we've had, and I'm only mentioning this one. I mentioned the other one because it was top of mind from late, late last night, but this other one's very recent too, where we had a case where there was a gastric bypass, a liver mass, a CPAP machine. It got approved, but that case would absolutely not have gotten approved. It would have been declined probably immediately if none of that information had been disclosed. And the carriers are basically considering whether or not to enter into a lifetime contract with a client. They want to know that they can trust the information that, that has been provided. And so I, I mentioned that case because it was a little iffy because we thought, hey, there's a lot of medical history on this thing. You know, I don't know, but it's a big client. It's a you know nice healthy premium, great, great agent. And so we made sure we put every single bit of information into that app and followed up in a timely fashion with every single one of the underwriters questions. And it ended up getting table rated, but approved. And now the client has coverage. Um, Dan, you probably know more about this than I do because it wasn't just for the family. This was a, you know, business owner policy. So they yeah. will approve it. That's not, that yes. shouldn't be a concern. It's the, the carriers will approve cases. What they really want to see is full, complete disclosure. I, re I remember one of the, the, and yes, it was like a four, and just so you all know, it's a $4 million case. And part of it was for business and part of it was for personal. Um, some things were left out. Some things were disclosed later. Uh, but get it all out on the table because uh, you know, Jen will tell you, uh, if you don't know this, that we automatically order a prescription drug check, Motor Medical Information Bureau. Um, uh, what else? The uh, Lexus Nexus for the financial stuff. Um, and what they don't like is when it doesn't match. They'd rather have you say, I take four things and, oh, yes, your, your Milman prescription drug check says four things. This is, hey, uh, you told us you don't take anything, but four things popped up. Far worse. And those are painful to have to share with all of you that this what could have been approved, but now they will not consider it. And I've seen the emails and some of you, I hope never get one by being on this call today is to have to hear that um, we, we will no longer consider because they did not include this. Had they included it, we would have considered. You don't want to be there. You don't want to be there. All right, Jen, um, thank you, Ray. Jen, uh, where do you want? I'm just kind of flowing through the application. Is there anything else you want me to touch on? I know there was a part where they can fill in some color as well. So is there anything else as I'm flowing through here that you want to touch on? Jen, you're on mute. Oh. It has to happen. I'm sorry. Once, once <laughs> that really fun. Um, okay, so if you if you skip on down to the additional information section. We're gonna skip the health questions entirely because I think one of the most overwhelming things is, again, I feel repetitive, but feeling like you need to be a doctor. You do not need to be a doctor. You might not even know where to put something on the app. You might not know what the condition means. Get the condition, get the medication. We give you this section to put in anything you want. You can say, my client does yoga, seven times a week and but has a um a prescription for high blood pressure which is well controlled if you have anything that you don't know where to put please put it here this is the open field we give you to it's essentially you're having a dialogue with the underwriter so when they are first taking in this application they're seeing this information they're still gonna do the database checks. You could say your client's healthy as a horse and it doesn't matter. They're gonna do the database checks, but this is a great place for you to put anything you need to communicate to that underwriter. So again, that they cannot come back and say, well, this wasn't disclosed. Uh, we do not expect you to be medical doctors. You don't have to know that atrial fibrillation is a heart condition. It's good if you do, because there's a section for that. 
But if you don't, here you go. Put it all here, put the medication, put how many times they're taking it, when they are diagnosed and who their doctor is. Whenever you have a question, you don't know where to put something, don't waste your time, don't waste your client's time. I know this, a lot of times you're on the phone with them or you're in person actually doing these applications and time is money. So go ahead and put it here um, and it, it takes care of that non-disclosure issue. Yeah, I would I would sort of reinforce what you're saying, Jen. It, it was perfect. A lot of times, agents may not know every single medical condition that a client has. It'd be great if they did. But what the client should know is every single prescription that has been written for them and ordered for them. Because that that way you start on the exact same playing field as the carrier because they're looking at a prescription history database and the client should know the prescriptions that they're on they may say you know i got prescribed this pain med for a tooth extraction that i never took it's still going to show up in the prescription database so our recommendation is list every single prescription here and why it was prescribed and if they never took it because it was just, you know, preventative or or just something that was optional, write that down here because then the the underwriter doesn't have to go track that down and doesn't have to make a incorrect inference based on seeing that medication in the prescription database. How about um and Jen, anything else on the app that we want to touch on that uh you've seen, heard that th that these folks would benefit from? No, I, just to reiterate, and I have said this and I will say it again, once you get into the application, there is no place that you are asking those financial questions. So it is so important to know that your client is em employed, to know that they don't have anything in collections, um, to ask about previous criminal history. Those are the really important things that aren't highlighted as much in the application in comparison to, to health issues. So again, if you have any concerns like that, use that dialogue box, that free form box that we give you um, to, to communicate with the underwriter. And, um, the, and none, all this is meant to help you. Uh, it may sound intimidating, and I, I see all these questions here. This is awesome. Um, thank you for that, keep them coming. Um, because uh, we're almost out of time as it is, but we're just we're just we want to pound as much in as we can. Um, I'm going to bring the uh, the uh, uh, the dashboard up here in just a second to share a couple more things with you. But it doesn't end there. Uh, Ray mentioned earlier these are contracts between the client and this carrier for a long time, and recently, good, bad, or indifferent, Ray, we've had these recent scenarios where things were not disclosed. And unfortunately, some unfortunate messages had to be delivered to customers, right? Yeah, yeah, we're starting to see this. Not, not a lot, but you know, a couple of cases over the last couple of months where the carrier has actually rescinded the policy after it went in force. And that is a terrible message to send to a client um, or even to an agent. That a, that a policy had to be rescinded because the carrier found information that would have led them to decline the case initially had it been disclosed. Um, and they can certainly go back and do that. We don't see that a lot, obviously. That's a, a rare situation. Yeah. Um, but it, it just goes to sort of reinforce that point of full and complete disclosure. Because going back to that case that we just mentioned, you know, with the gastric bypass and the CPAP and the liver mass, the carrier can't go back, you know, 18 months from now and say, you didn't tell us about a liver mass because it's in there and the CPAP is in there and the bypass is in there. So that's another way to sort of protect from a carrier rescinding a policy down the road as well. Yeah, and you and you have rate classes, and you have all of it. It's all built in there. It's just about managing the risk, and 
the things we're repeating, if you can't can tell how important they are, is you are going to provide color in that box that that uh, uh, Jen was talking about earlier. Put color in there and context around things. By the way, some of the things, and I'm not saying this happens all the time. Sometimes you're going to be an advocate for your client. If there's something that the client disagrees with or you disagree with, provide context around it. Don't just, you know, no, though that's not right. Provide some context. What was the situation? What happened? Um, on especially some of the larger cases, things like instant term, you know, it's a machine that 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 generates the results, but on most cases, an underwriter is probably going to be looking at it in some form or fashion. Provide that color. Provide some explanation. And also know that just because you get a result, and be respectful with this, right? you, you can also ask, what was the reason? Um, but for HIPAA rules, right, they're, we're pretty limited in what they can tell us, which we understand. But... You can push back on things. I mentioned uh, somebody had a, uh, a sm uh, an A1C level in their doctor chart, but that was from a long time ago. Well, all the underwriters saw was that. Go back to them and say, what if this? I've had multiple cases where uh, one result, one offer was made uh, that between the agent and the client, because they're part of this whole thing, the uh, we gave the we gave the the underwriter more color to it, and they were able to come up with a better solution. And this is also where your case managers, who are some of the best in the business, with with Steph and Karen, and and obviously Jen doing what she does, but they they are going to be your advocate as well, and know that you have multiple people that uh, are going to be there to help. I'm just going back to the the, the product center because I want to I'm touching on banner. Because I do think there's some things uh, earlier we talked about a protection portfolio and you don't have to use one product for all their coverage. Inside of uh, the banner in particular, you look at some things. I think, Jim, we realize that they're more lenient in some areas. And this is where you knowing the different uh, the different pro the different products and the subtleties within them are important to know, right? It's, they're not the same. The height and weight charts aren't the same. You can read faster than I could talk. Look at, so you could just read some of these and go in here. It's right here. This is in banner. Look at, look at the preferred considerations there. Asthma, anxiety, mild sleep apnea. Preferred may be possible even with these. And again, you could read faster than I could talk. I don't even know what's, I never heard of this. I don't know what that is. As Jen said, I don't need to be a doctor. That's why we have these people. And then come down here, standard plus, type 2 diabetes. They focus on that. Foresters is another one that is very empathetic towards diabetics. It's good for you to know that. Look at this, standard plus, even with severe sleep apnea. As long as they're using the CPAP. The way the case Ray mentioned, the guy admitted he wasn't using a CPAP. And because we said that, because we were honest, we got an approval. We got an approval. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen every time. But we were honest. We, the agent, the agent disclosed. Hey, so Dan, said, I know we're starting to, uh, we're starting to hit the end of the hour. Do you want to maybe close on the sort of success story that you've that you had recently with an agent who was kind of stuck on one side of the spectrum, but then has evolved his his approach and and really honed his field underwriting to the point now where he's doing a completely different kind of business and generating a, a completely different kind of income stream? I mean, some of the I, I've been really pleased with. One in particular who they never really understood this part of it. They were running and gunning, and it was this approach of, I'll just throw stuff in and something will stick. And they were working in a pretty affluent market. And I just started to, and you know, sometimes it's hard to keep many of you, you know, corralled and get you to focus. And I said, look, if any of you have ever seen the movie Top Gun, 
uh, if you know the movie, uh, Cole Trickle goes out and he burns up the tires, right? And and then uh, the, uh, the the crew chief says, okay, you're going to run 50 laps your way, and then you're going to run 50 laps my way. So Cole goes out, burns up the tires his way. Now he says, now do it my way. And he came back, and the tires were miraculously much better. So I just said, look, you're not having success. You're getting frustrated. Let's just start to look at it in this fashion. All right, let's start to look at the cases prior. Let's have the conversation. Let's ask the questions. Let's use all the things that all of you have heard here today. And what started to happen was he started to see, hey, wow, they're approving these. The more I tell them, the better it seems to be. And what started to happen is that opened up even more people because he thought there was people he just would never be able to get qualified who had plenty of money. He started to understand what field underwriting meant. And now it has become one of our biggest, most consistent uh, deliverers of significant cases into our platform. And uh, I couldn't be prouder uh, of, of seeing that. And that's some a lot of the things that you're hearing today. All I do is I share those as we're doing today with the hope that you're going to leverage them. And it'll take time, but it works. And um, uh, we're really so thank you for the reminder. Ray. We almost missed that. And yes, we are. We already we have bumped and gone over. So, um, uh, Jen, was there anything else we missed so we can wrap up here and, and say thanks to everybody? No, I think we've covered it. But as always, we're here for your questions. If you have concerns about a specific client, email us at support at a hello plum. Uh, we gave you also the, the uh, quick quote tool for banner specifically, but we're always here to help and to answer your questions um, for you and for your clients. Okay. And try, try, I'll make it a challenge to all of you uh, and I'll have Ray close for us. I challenge all of you to ne never get a never get an email from Jen. I mean, she sends mm -hmm. cool emails too. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> make it a point. Make it a point to not get that email, um, and you'll be much better off. She would like to talk to you about other things, but not necessarily that. Ray, any closing comments? Just that this is about you know finding coverage for your clients, but also generating success for yourself and for your family. We have. That you know, agent that Dan just mentioned is now consistently generating, you know, ten thousand dollar one case just last week of thirty thousand dollar commission. So these are big, big cases, and they generate you know nice incomes, and that's important for everyone. So getting better at this means more customers get covered, but also more success for yourself. So that's really the name of the game here. We're trying to make everybody successful and. Um, yeah, I think we can all get there together. Yep. So awesome. Um, thank you, Ray. Uh, thank you, Jen. Uh, we all enjoyed doing this session, and it just keeps getting better. But that's because all of you are taking the uh, the time to to spend with us. We'll have this recorded and sent out. So hopefully, you took a lot of notes. I see some awesome questions and uh, appreciate them. Uh, you have a lot of choices to make, and uh, you chose to take an hour out of your day. I know if you just leverage one of these ideas and start to have those conversations, you're going to have that better result. And as right, our our average case size here at Plum Life, because of the for the the broader depth of products, our case size has gone up pretty significantly over time. So that was no joke what Ray just said, and uh, we can handle small, big. We don't care. We want to help everybody. We just want to help as many of them as we can so you're not wasting your time uh, or theirs but thank you for your time uh, uh go forth use this material let us know how it's going and keep the questions coming reach out to myself jp uh, tim and our whole team on behalf of everybody here at plum life have a great day and uh, we'll talk to you soon thanks everybody